Rhiannon from the Talent Tap, and I am talking to a number of consultants and uh, the careers uh, people from FTI Consulting. Um, what's the purpose of this webinar? We want you to understand a bit more about consulting careers and how you get into the world of consulting. So we've brought together um, consultants from different segments of FDI Consulting who are going to tell us a bit about their own personal journeys into this career and then give us insight into their day-to-day -day lives, how they, um, how, they, how they work together, how projects work, and hopefully the ups and downs of the whole, um, the whole path. Um, I'm going to introduce you first to Louis, who's going to talk to you a bit about FTI Consulting. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, it's a pleasure to have everyone from the Talent Tap uh, here. Um, so before we introduce you to a bunch of our consultants and colleagues, I'll give you a quick introduction of uh, what FTI is as an organisation, what we aim to do, and some useful information that I think you guys would like to know. So FTI Consulting is an independent global business, business advisory firm dedicated to helping clients man manage risk, mitigate change, and also resolve disputes. And this can include um, like financial, legal, political, reputational disputes. So we are one of the leading firms um, globally for crisis management, and we assess and we assist our clients through difficult times. So each department at FTI is uh, is specialised with lots of experts in each segment to try and support clients in a range of different areas. So, for example, our five, our five main segments we have technology. Uh, corporate finance and restructuring, and we also have economic consulting, um, FLC, and strategic communications. So, what those five segments do: technology, they offer a lot of like technological kind of assistance. That could be like cybersecurity. Um, that could also be um, like um, also a lot of kind of like cloud kind of stuff like that. And then we also have um, a lot of like FLC, for example, they do a lot of like for in, like kind of forensic looking into finance, so a lot of stuff could be related to um, like um, looking into frauds and helping organizations look into frauds. Um, and then we also have EFC, which looks in valuating companies. So whenever there's disputes, they will try and act as like an intermediate to try and evaluate two different companies. And then for strategic communications, uh, that segment is specialized for producing um, kind of like a supporting organization with comms put out for their message to deal with difficult situations. So um, that's kind of a quick overview of the main statements. I'm sure the consultants will be able to give much more detail about them uh, and kind of any more information. So I think that's everything from me on a quick introduction to FTI. Thank you very much, Louis. So if I could ask the um, consultants to introduce themselves give a little bit of a background into where you grew up, what sort of university, which universities you went to, and tell, uh, and then tell us a little bit about what your current role is, and if you could explain what that actually means. So in a bit of layman's terms, for some of us won't know exactly what um, each consulting role or each consulting function means. And then if you could tell us a bit about how that fits into FDI's bigger picture, how you work together in your different teams, um, so perhaps we could start with uh, Emma. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, great to be here. My name is Emma. I'm from South West London. Um, grew up there my whole life, really. Um, went to University of Warwick. I studied PPE, which is politics, philosophy and economics. Um, I graduated from uni last summer. So I came um, pretty much straight to FTI after that. It started last September. So I've been here for just over about four months now, I think. I'm on the graduate scheme here at FTI, which basically means that I'll be rotating through three different teams. Um, firstly, I was in the energy team, and right now I'm in the financial services team. So just give a bit of an overview as to, I guess, kind of day-to-day -day life of being consultant at FTI. You kind of do a mix of supporting on client accounts and also some kind of other bits that supporting different things going on in the team. So client accounts is basically when companies hire of FTI Consulting, Stratcom specifically, to support them in advancing some kind of communications objective that they have. So that might be corporate communication. So that involves things like, you know, writing like bylines or articles for our um, clients, to make sure that they're getting the kind of message that they want out to the press, writing press releases where we'll be kind of 
talking about different announcements that they want press coverage on and then compiling any coverage that does come of that so that we can share that kind of feedback with the client. Those are the kind of things involved in corporate communications and financial communications is more about uh, the con support that we give to listed clients. So there's uh, co companies that are listed on the stock exchange and uh, so they're kind of publicly listed companies, everything around financial reporting. It often involves a similar kind of thing to what I mentioned in corporate communications, things like coverage, uh, monitoring for news coverage that our clients has generated and putting all that together really and sending that to the clients that they have an overview of the kind of work that we're doing for them and supporting them on. So I guess in terms of how it fits into like the bigger picture, yeah, like um, we were just kind of saying FTI as a whole, the whole company is a like a global management consultancy. So I guess big picture aim here is just supporting companies, leadership in achieving whatever kind of corporate aims that they have. And that can vary hugely. What kind of aims of supporting depends on whether you're in like Stratcoms or FLC or the different segments in FTI. So what we're doing is just helping with the communications kind of side of that in FTI. Um, so yeah, that's my kind of role here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, shall we move on to Jand? Jand? Yeah. Um, so my name is Jude, uh, and I'm originally from Jordan, and I graduated with a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering. So I did part of my bachelor's degree in Jordan and then continued the rest of it in Germany. And then after that, I did, uh, I worked for Bush and Siemens in Germany, in Munich. And then after that, um, I moved on to consulting. So I worked for a cons management consulting firm that does projects in Qatar, Dubai, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, I worked mostly on HR and strategy consulting uh, projects. And then after that, I decided to do my master's in strategic entrepreneurship and innovation at King's. And then I decided to basically um, work in financial services, but at the same time, I did not really want to um, join uh, the banks, but wanted more of the, the consulting aspects of the financial services. So I decided to join FTI Consulting. Um, I'm currently a regulatory risk management consultant here at FTI, and we're basically, the department is part of the FLC department, which is the Forensic and Litigation Consulting Services Department. Um, that's mainly, um, related to that basically does a range of services and risks, investigations, disputes, and um, it really does focus on regulated industries and uh, um, matters that has to do with fraud, corruption, money laundering, and so on. So basically under the FLC um, department, there's the FAS department, there's the regulatory risk management department which I work in, and then there's the financial compliance department as well. And we all complement each other in a way. So um, basically the financial the uh, compliance team would work on uh, uh, how to prevent fraud and to they would investigate into um, allegations of uh, money laundering and so on. We would also help the, help the company to kind of um, um, implement the regulations that were set by the FCA or by the government um, in terms of like how to prevent um, money laundering in banks, how to um, solve disputes and so on. So um, we also work on um, the risk aspect in our department. So in terms of um, business change programs in terms of risk management framework, in terms of um, remediation programs, and all of that. We try to help um, regulators, financial institutions, um, across the, basically the whole range, the spectrum of financial services when it comes to um, uh, implementing regulations. And um, not just implementing, but also um, being able to kind of uh, show that um, firms follow these uh, regulation. So yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, perhaps we could have Will next. Uh, yeah, so hi everyone, my name is Will. Uh, I'm an intern in the economic and financial consulting practice here at FDI. Uh, so I grew up uh, on the rural near Liverpool uh, and I went to uni at Bath Uni and uh, Bath have uh, a bit of a relationship with FDI um, and they, as part of their third year of the course, so I study economics at Bath, and I'm technically in my third year, but for this whole year, I'm, I'm basically taking a year out, and for the whole year, uh, working at FTI, and I, I, I sort of joined in a similar way to the, the, the graduates of this intake, and I basically do similar work to them, but I'll be here for a year, and then go back and complete my studies in fourth year. Um, so in terms of what economic and financial consulting do, um, someone's already sort of touched on it. We offer 
largely a valuation service. Um, so if two companies uh, are, are in, in court or an arbitration or any sort of legal dispute arguing about uh, an amount uh, that I suppose they can't agree on, or maybe it's not quite clear what that amount should be. Sometimes, say, for example, um, you can't look back at a company's accounts and find out how much they lost because uh, what they're trying to argue is that they actually lost their future profits that they would have made if this, this hadn't happened. Um, so, for example, if uh, one company is awarded a contract for a certain piece of work and another company isn't and it's deemed to be unfair, we would come in and do a bit of analysis to try and figure out maybe how much they would have made if they had been allocated that contract and therefore how much they lost because of that. So uh, a big part of our work is, is sort of trying to find out what profits were lost and, and valuing damages um, for, for claims. And then we will ultimately send an expert witness into court um, who will then say, well, we think the amount is this, or we think you should take this into account and this is why. Uh, and then another side to our work is, uh, similar to June mentioned, uh, economic regulatory advice. Uh, and so often a regulator or a regulated company will come to us uh, and, and the regulator might say, if we were to impose this rule, what would the, the impact be? So a lot of our work is forward looking and trying to predict sort of what would happen rather than what already has happened. Uh, in terms of my role as a, as a consultant, I'll often be doing uh, a lot of the analysis and maybe some report drafting which eventually sort of gets uh, interpreted by our, our senior management directors, and then we will send a representative uh, to court. So I will, I will sort of do the, the back-end work as I'm more junior, and then as you get more and more, more experience, you can be more client-facing, which I think is, is the way with a lot of uh, that like similar with a lot of FTI. Great, thank you. Uh, yes, Hi, um, lovely to be here today. My name's Yaz. I was born in Amsterdam, uh, brought in Reading and went to Durham um, and I studied liberal arts there, which is basically you can pick loads of different modules from the arts and humanities and languages. And lots of people were applying to lots of grad schools, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I moved home and worked in a hospital for a bit. And um, while I was thinking about like ways I could apply my experience in the hospital, I came across health comms. And that motivated me to join FTI's Stratcom's grad scheme, where I'm currently uh, on right now. Um, so the same as Emma, we're rotating around three different teams. Um, I was in the industrials team and now I'm in the digital team, which is pretty polar opposite as you can get. Um, and I'm happy to go into more detail about why that is. Um, but broadly, our job, we advise companies and individuals because the way that we aim to protect and enhance reputation is so joined up that we need, we basically need to have an awareness of everything that's happening. Think about media, government, um, and the whole world of investors as well, um, which sounds scary, but it's not really. Um, and that just starts with daily monitoring um, and just keeping up to date with the news industry. Um, and that boils down to individual journalists, um, and then you can start to think about whether we're going to be putting messages out there just off our own backs, that's a proactive way, or if we're reacting to what's going on outside. Um, and then if we're working with individuals, think about different ways that we can profile them and get them out there. Um, and then finally, new business, so trying to win new clients, seeing where the gaps are and like where we can fill them. Um, so it's so interesting, there's so much going on. Um, and I think as a grad, the way your role fits into the big picture is having connections, thinking about things in a creative way and thinking about ways that you can expand your offering um, as you build your career um, and ultimately deliver the best service. But yeah, I'll come on to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all very much for giving that sort of quick run through background of where and how you ended up at FTI. What we're going to do now is move into a bit more structured um, Q&A. Firstly, okay, so consulting sounds super exciting, quite glamorous, lots of client meetings. Can somebody just give me a quick overview of your day? The first thing about um, some of the teams in Stratcoms is you'll be on your client accounts, which means there's eight companies, let's say, that you work with consistently. Um, so for those who might have 
weekly, bi-weekly, monthly calls in your calendar. Um, so you might have two or three calls a day if you don't count internal catch-ups and team meetings and things. Um, but the life of a consultant basically means that a client can send a request anytime and the job is to break it down and turn it around and reply and find an answer ASAP. Um, so when you write the to-do list in the morning, it sometimes ends up looking completely different by the end of the day. And normally I have things I have to do and things that it would be nice if I get done, but like sometimes that just doesn't happen. You just have to roll with that. Um, and I think that's like one of the really exciting, like stimulating things. What sort of person do you think you need to be to be a consultant? I was gonna say, I think as you were just saying, your day can kind of change a lot and you often have like a lot of different kind of small tasks to do that you're also juggling with maybe some bigger kind of project work that's a bit more long term so I think because of that having like good organizational skills I, I see I would say it's like a pretty key one just because yeah you've got a lot of things to balance things can always change and just having the kind of I guess the ability to be able to roll with it but make sure that you're still getting everything done that you need to get done is a pretty important skill I'd also say uh, I think this probably applies across consulting kind of like respective whether you're in stratcoms or you know economic and financial consulting but I think having quite good like attention to detail skills or kind of enjoying doing that you know having tasks where you're doing like a lot of like desktop research and you're looking for like a particular thing you might have to trawl through loads of different articles or loads of different you know databases or whatever it is and find certain bits of information that can also often take kind of attention to detail kind of skills so being able to do that also, you know, every kind of document that we produce, we need to make sure before we send it off to the client that there's no errors, you know, no spelling mistakes, no kind of grammatical errors, anything like that. So that always requires us to kind of comb through everything with a, you know, with a fine tooth comb and make sure that there's there's nothing there that we've missed. So I think those are two pretty key skills that I think you use kind of on a day to day basis. Okay, great. Um, Here's a, I'm just going to bring up a question from somebody who um, is asking something specifically, saying, is it ever too late to join the field of consultancy or is it easier to shift careers from consultancy? It works both ways. If you want to get into it straight out of university, that's great because you'll build up this wealth of experience in this sort of specific field. And ultimately, consultancy is a company or a client will pay for your specific expertise on something. And so if you sort of get into the field early and, and learn like for as long as possible, then you're going to have like a, a better base of knowledge to draw on when someone engages you. But similarly, if you are in a different industry, you could maybe bring that specific area of expertise into consultancy and then you have this sort of first hand experience to draw from. So I think it work, works both ways. It's definitely never too, too late to join, but also I wouldn't hesitate to join straight out of university and obviously that's what I've done so I'm probably biased but join straight out of university and you can you can also build up your expertise while you're in consultancy. Brilliant and what were you going to add Jan? Uh, no I think he pretty much covered everything but the only thing is that uh, basically I started off as a category management in the category management department of Bush and Siemens which was very technical uh, basically translating technical specification into the customer needs and it was completely different from consulting but then I realized that when I entered consulting is the idea that you work on multiple projects and for example currently I'm working on like three different projects that has to do with governance, um, fraud, uh, money laundering so you kind of get like the experience from different um, projects and from um, basically different uh, yeah different experiences depending on the project so I think that's very interesting about consulting so it's never too late to kind of like get this um, uh, idea on different things, yeah. Okay, thank you. What has been the highlight of your career so far? Ask somebody. So was, I had one of my clients that I was on in my previous team, we had a big kind of workshop event with them. It was kind of our kickoff meeting with the client. They were a new client. So it was a pretty big meeting. Um, we were doing a kind of messaging workshop with them. So that's basically just figuring out what kind of messages does this client want to be getting across to the media its customers you know what does it want to be putting out there into the world um, about you know what they stand for and things like that um, so we had this meeting with them i had prepared um, quite a bit of research beforehand into the company so they had a few kind of existing marketing materials and things out there that we pulled from so we could kind of gather you know up till now what kind of messages have they been saying about themselves and how do we think they could tweak these and improve these um, as we eventually support them to doing that 
and in the slide itself I actually got pulled into kind of presenting this research that I had done which wasn't something that I was like 100% prepared for doing and it's usually something that I get quite nervous about doing and it can be really daunting kind of speaking in a client meeting and things like that but it was also really nice that I was pulled in to talk about it because at the end of the day you know it was the research that I had done and it was just really great that the people I was working with were really keen to like make sure that I could speak to the client and that I had kind of that exposure and that I could also you know take ownership of the work that I'd done and share that with them and so that was a real highlight for me I think that was a really good experience and I felt like I learned a lot from doing that. Thank you thank you okay what do you wish you knew when you first started working in consultancy perhaps is there something crucial to bear in mind before starting? I think for me, um, a vital aspect of like a very important aspect of consulting is not just uh, like um, it's also the political skills and um, communication skills and leadership skills are very important in consulting. So I feel like people should also not just um, work on um, um, the let's say the educational background or like, but also develop these soft skills as well because they're very very important in consulting. So I think this is yeah one of the things. Okay, um, just going back to looking really at FTI again. What opportunities have you been offered to travel between the different uh, between the different offices? I think it's something that you put yourself forward for, um, and you can go work in other offices. But also bearing in mind that it normally makes sense if you've got connections out there because people are still work going about their working day. Um, so we hear quite a lot about people going to Brussels um, so some of my team are there now um, because they're meeting there but um, it has to kind of make sense with the, the whole, um, what's the word like why you would go um, mm -hmm. but definitely it's something we hear about and it's something that I'm really keen to do at some point in my career. And do you um, do you travel on your projects? Do you go into clients who are abroad or based have other bases around the UK? For us, it, it, um, it depends. It, it, it tends to be that nowadays we can work fully remotely and we can sort of get everything we need sent to us. Uh, on, on, on the very occasional basis, you do have to be on client site and that can be something like quite exciting uh, for our work. That's normally because maybe they don't want to have like confidential files leaked out of their system or something like that. So we'll end up sort of going on site for them. I think for us, that's more rare, but it's worth noting that um, there's also, I think it's FDI wide, uh, a sort of secondment scheme. So after you've been in the job for a certain amount of time, you can elect to go to a different office. And as long as it sort of works with the workload and, and of, of the office you're in and the one you're going to, uh, they're normally quite flexible in trying to accommodate that. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, when you were at university, did you know you wanted to be a consultant? And did you even know what being a consultant actually was? No, I definitely didn't. <laughs> um, it's like it's such a cool industry and company, I'd say, because I feel like everyone who I work with is just so lovely. And you can there is this image of consulting um, that it's a bit cutthroat or it's a bit, I don't know, um, a certain way. But the reality of working is people really like working with each other and there's really lovely team cultures they're all very different um but also it is about the effort that you make uh with getting to know people and working with people um especially i think in the earlier days like while you're trying to establish yourself it's kind of a role where if you know enough people they normally tell you the answers about how to do things and that's kind of how you can like work your way through um so i had no idea but i'm very feel very lucky to have landed where i am Okay, great. I've got a quick um, question directly for Will. Will, how was the application process for you and what did you have to do to get the placement? Uh, well, I think my application process was, I assume, very similar to, to everyone else on the call. Um, to run through it quickly, you, you submit a CV and then you'll do uh, like an online test. And then based on that, you will be um, invited to an assessment day where you will have uh, a group interview, uh, which is sort of with other applicants, that's just sort of see how you work. It's like Yasmin and I have touched on, it's quite important to have those soft skills and interpersonal skills to talk to other people. So they sort of check that you've got that in the, in the group exercise. And then you'll have a competency-based interview where they might go through examples of your CV and say, you know, what 
tell me more about this or tell me about a time when you had to deal with this. And then um, you'll have a senior managing director interview where they can ask you just about anything. I've heard people who just talk about football. Some people got grilled on the news, so it really can be anything. Um, and then after that, you will sort of hear back. It's all worth well noting that definitely for EFC, uh, the graduate application process also involves a 140-minute case study where you'll be given some data and basically just a little simulation of our work just to see how you would work through it. But there's not too much expectation on you to obviously be ready for the job. It's just to see how you think. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh, can anyone ask answer a question about the tech department? Um, although I have not worked directly with the tech in the, in the tech department, I have worked together with them. And yes, it would be good to have at least the technical ability if you want to go into. However, um, if you maybe have picked up some coding here and there, that would be really, really helpful for that department. Um, sometimes also very um, economical skills would be quite good. And math skills, they are flexible. So let's say you had, uh, you had maybe um, computer science in your um, A levels, and then you've gone maybe more into economics, they are happy to take the risk if you are still somebody who likes to do coding or do, do some gaming at home. Because here and there, it's quite good to, to learn the software and to be able to adapt to that. I hope that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. I can see Will is very kindly offering to answer a quick question about how hard has it been to go from university to full time work, but I, I think you're the most recently into this so perhaps if Will could give his his answer and then somebody else could also give a quick answer. So, I guess the reason it, it, they asked me was because I'm sort of going in between them like I had, was had last year in uni, this year in work and the next year in uni, uh, and I think certainly now i've like been in a few months it's definitely a, a less of a shock to the system than i expected i think mainly because at fti you join with this big group of graduates and so it almost feels like a university course everyone joining together so you end up like making plenty of friends who you'll sort of carry on with uh so it's not like you're just thrown in with a load of people who already know what they're doing and i also uh, I, I think the the actual nature of the work is it's quite easy to adapt from university and actually in, in a lot of ways it can be nicer because when you sort of finish on a Friday you're done whereas at uni you know at the weekend you might be expected to obviously keep going with some work stuff like that so obviously it's hard work in the week but it's quite nice just having your weekends fully off which isn't really the case at uni. Okay thank you. So, okay perhaps then we could um, we've got so many questions about recruitment and uh, applications perhaps Doris we could uh, run through a few of the quick questions and then you could give it a bit of an insight into um, some opportunities that are coming up. Yes, um, of course. Okay, so I'm just fire some quick questions about to you and then and then you hopefully you can give some broader answers. Um, do you get any extra professional qualifications through working at FTI, sort of qualifications of project management? Yes, we do offer PRINCE2 qualifications. We also have a complete training path of different trainings involved, uh, which you can take. And the schemes itself also have uh, on-site training. There could be consultancy training. There could be soft skills training. There is lots of um, things of becoming maybe more a confident negotiator as well. And um, I mean, maybe the others also want to add in a bit more from the training courses they received, but it is quite a planned pathway for all of these different graduate routes. And uh, it's normally, some of them are 10 months long where you rotate through different departments as well within that particular particular segment. And uh, there is a lot of mixture on, on the job learning, but definitely 20% are, are really proper um, set up trainings, almost like in a classroom. Okay, great. And um, looking at the graduate scheme, do you pick a department you'd like to be in when you're applying for the grad scheme or do you just get given somewhere? Uh, you can apply for more than one graduate scheme. That's fine. Um, in the end, of course, you make, have to make a decision. Um, depending as well on what you study, some of them might not be available to you. So, for example, the, um, the strategic communications department, uh, that's all about really 
storytelling, about being maybe a creative writer as well. Uh, that will be open to uh, many different disciplines. So if you're studying, for example, English and creative writing or journalism, that would be really good. Also, other humanities studies are very welcome to apply here. Um, the technology uh, department, they're looking more for applications, of course, with the element of maybe studying something in IT or cybersecurity um, is quite is quite fond. However, um, also the financial litigation consultancy has a graduate program where they're also looking for broader economic skills. Uh, um, also, if you study law, that could be quite helpful there. Um, accountancy, so they're quite welcome there as well. And then the economic financial consultancy department, um, they're also welcoming different backgrounds, but it has to be something, um, again, with good with numbers, good analytical skill set would be very handy there. Okay. Um, and what's the best thing that somebody can do to improve their CV to get them an internship or a grad job with FDI? So I would definitely say the CV has to have as well your LinkedIn profile in it. And to be able to do the LinkedIn profile is, is almost as half as important as the CV in here. I would highly recommend you bring your LinkedIn profile up to date, follow the company you're applying, also follow the um, the people you are got to meet in the company. So if you know that you have an interview there, go and connect immediately on LinkedIn with that person, find out what's happening there. Um, follow the company, follow the news which is happening there. And if you will be in the interview, then and you can tell something you have read on LinkedIn about the company that will be really scoring you some points. The CV itself, please make sure that you have no spelling mistakes. Keep the one or two pages maximum. Um, have a very nice personal statement of yourself, um, not more than five sentences, I would recommend. And these five sentences must be very strong attention grabbing. That should be a, a very good sales pitch, which describes you and your personal unique selling point. If that's maybe that you speak a different language, that you know a certain course you have attended, or maybe you have volunteered somewhere, um, that would be really, really nice to highlight. And then, of course, have a look at the job spec from the graduate program. Uh, there are probably going to be some highlighted details there, something like whether used adjectives, uh, things like passionate, dedicated, organized. Try to use these adjectives in your CV as well. And that's why it's important to tailor your CV to each role separately, because these adjectives are often used as algorithms. And in some companies, not in FDI, but in some companies, uh, your CV will might not be seen by a human eye first. It will be seen by a machine and the machine will sort your CV out. And the less you have on these signal words in your CV, the more likely it is that you'll actually not be seen by the next step, which will be a human recruiter. So therefore, I can highly stress this enough, um, rather apply to less programs and really, really take some more time to tailor your CV. And instead of sending one CV out to thousands of programs and hoping that you're slipping through there. Uh, quality um, instead of quantity is, is the key here. That's really interesting and really, really helpful. Uh, does FTI offer internships for students who are in their first universe, uh, year of university? Not in the first year, unfortunately. Um, we offer it in the second year, as of in the penultimate year of um, university, we do offer an internship there. We also have, um, however, specific um, information days where we invite to inside days at FTI. Um, that recently we just had uh, had one, which is from the Future Leaders Program. This has always been taking place for those who apply for a summer internship, which is eight weeks long, or who apply for a graduate role. There's two each year, which we offer and, and different inside days. Um, yeah, but not for the first one, I'm sorry. Not for the first year, second year. Okay. And what about if you don't go to university? Are there job routes for students who haven't got a degree? We have uh, brilliant apprenticeships already now introduced. Uh, there's one for strategic communications, which is pretty much um, big, is, is almost like a um, uh, journalism education you receive from there. That's a fantastic apprenticeship uh, in combination with, um, um, sorry, <laughs> it's called the Institute for um, for Public Relations, and that's in combination there. So it's an 18 months apprenticeship in, co in corporate communications, which they will offer again next year uh, for applicants. Then we just recently hired in technology forensics um, 
we hired an apprentice for data electronic data technician electronic level three so that will become somebody that, that will give somebody the opportunity to be, actually become a consultant in the forensics technology department without going to university and by kind of a lot of hands on the job learning and one training which they receive via the company babington our apprenticeship provider that's an 18 months long program as well and then we have another 18 months program for those uh, who are more looking into more a general introduction to business so business administration level three is there available and that's currently um, in different departments within um, fti the most recent we have just hired is for the facilities management department okay thank you i'm going to ask um could each one of the uh, consultants just tell me very briefly one or two sentences what was the thing that you think that helped you secure your role at FTI? And then Doris, I'll come back to you just for a final roundup of opportunities. Of so uh, perhaps we could start with Yasmin. What was the one thing that you think made a difference? Uh, so I actually did an internship over summer um, at FTI. And in the run up to that, I messaged so many people on LinkedIn, came in for so many coffees. And what that allowed me to learn about was the value of communication. So examples in the real world of where it's worked, where it hasn't. And you've got to kind of think at a more business level rather than like just to consumers, but that's something that you can learn. Um, but the, the value of the job that you want to do and a complete understanding of FTI, what it does, how each segment is different and how it compares to its competitors, I think is just like something you have to know. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, Will? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd echo what Jasmine said in terms of you, you have to really understand what your segment does specifically because it's not always that clear, but you can really tell when someone's done their research. Um, but I think maybe the thing that set me apart was I did a research project while I was like my last year of school, which happened to be like it was something I was interested in, but it was really quite relevant to EFC work. And I think they sort of picked up on that and it sort of so just any any sort of experience you've got if it shows an interest in that field it's, it's going to be helpful okay thank you um, who'd like to go next uh, emma sure um i think for me it was probably making sure i was really up to date on like things going on in the news at the time um keeping up with politics and current affairs um, i think especially in strap problems but i'd say consulting widely um just making sure you're kind of up to date on things that's going on in the world is just really important and it's a really good thing to show your interviewer and i just remember in my interview i ended up having um, a long conversation with the person the people who were interviewing me about uh, cop 26 which was going on at the time when i had my interview and that was you know a really big thing going on in the news at the moment it's just really useful to be able to make sure you kind of have certain things that are going on that you know a lot about that you have opinions on that you're happy to kind of speak on and kind of being able to feed those kind of discussions into the interviews was a really a useful thing. Um, so yeah, I'd say keeping up with the news is a really good one. Brilliant, thank you. Jan? Yeah, so for me, I think it's two things. First of all, it's like how you present yourself. So when it comes to the CV, I really did make sure to include like um, how, how did, like the tasks that I did previously in whether like an internship or in whatever I, uh, project or anything, how did they actually impact or created impact? So that's one thing. And then another thing is, um, I like what Emma said, basically um, the fact that during an interview, I gave them a different um, example, real life example of what's actually going on. Um, it, gave them an, it, it gave them the impression that I actually understand what's going on in real life. And that actually helped me a lot in um, securing this um, job. Okay. Thank you all. Um, Doris, could you just give a very quick, I know we've sort of run over time and I'm aware that everybody's given up their work, a bit of their work time. So if you could just give us a really quick overview of opportunities um, that are available or coming up or how, how anybody even finds out about them. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're definitely going to visit all of your universities uh, when the career fairs are starting in the September season. Before that, please follow our web page on F FTI Consultancy and also uh, follow our LinkedIn page um, on FTI. Maybe some of you would like to connect with me directly under Doris Web on the LinkedIn. Um, I'm also going to inform you there. And uh, we're going to have, um, currently we still have uh, internships for the summer available to apply for. for um, there's going to be the EFC 
uh, if you want to apply for that for the uh, the, the um, economical financial consultancy internship in the summer, uh, then you would have to hurry because you're closing that next Tuesday. So, this the, if you find the link on our web page, I'm also going to co copy it here into the chat section. Then you can apply there directly. Otherwise, for next year, um, we're going to start applying our um, kind of releasing our roles in September time. That's going to be graduate programs and internship programs. Uh, the graduate programs will be again for um, uh, financial litigation consultancy, different areas they're hiring. Uh, we have the strategic communications department, uh, the economic and financial consultancy department, the technology department. All of them will have graduate programs available. And we have um, free summer internships again available for data analytics in financial consult litigation consultancy. That's an eight weeks summer program where we're also opening the applications from December onwards and also for the economic financial consultancy and the strategic communications department. Otherwise, if you have um, the interest to do an apprenticeship, I think it's always good to maybe check in with us on our career web page uh, on a regular basis because they're currently happening a bit ad hoc because there's still a new um, area where we venture out in, in FTI and more and more departments are joining us in this, in this journey. So yeah, please watch out for that. We always got to make some announcement if a new role becomes available on LinkedIn. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Doris, for all of that. Um, thank you to everybody, all of the panellists who've given up your time. Um, we really, really appreciate it. The Talent Tap has got an extremely uh, fond spot for everybody at FTI. You're so endlessly supportive of all our students. So we're really appreciative. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.